Hey, yo, we are back with our second installment, our second installment of Who F and Knows podcast, which I'm going to be honest, I am excited, uh, surprised. We made it through. You didn't have faith we'd get to two episodes? Yeah, you know what? I, listen, I've been here before and I've had people, <laughs> we recorded an episode on another podcast I was on. And after that episode, which never aired, by the way. Um, I've heard that story. Yeah, we just we just killed it. So yeah, I am I am shocked, surprised, excited, ready to keep going. I feel like I should take that as an insult, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're good, man. You're good, but no, we're back. Um, I, I'll be honest, you know, it, it is the Who F and Knows podcast. We were kind of coming in here, didn't really have. I mean, we have some topics we're going to dive into. Obviously, we'll always keep it local. We'll we'll talk stuff that's relevant, but we also um, didn't really have anything like super outlined. So something fun, I think, I want to do today. It's just kind of roll with it. I have Twitter open, um, and and we're gonna dive into local sports. We will, I promise you guys. So stick with us if that's what you're here for. But what I want to start with, oh, and we're gonna have top fives too. We're gonna close with that every time. What I want to start with is something that I responded to on Twitter earlier. I'm sure a lot of other people did as well. Um, there was a Fox Eight tweet earlier. Um, it said, without saying your age, what is something from your childhood that a younger person wouldn't understand i feel like there's a fun mm. a fun kickstarter conversation here before we dive in dave looks like he's got nothing um because i just i wish i had seen this beforehand so i had yeah, a second to think yeah about just it. put him on the spot with it that's okay that's okay and this can lead into another another little thing that uh will be fun too for me my response i'll go first since you don't have anything yet i'll give you time to think um i saw someone tweet about the frankie and johnny you know furniture <laughs> commercial um, and I responded just cause that stuck out to me. I, I grew up in, in Metairie. Um, we bought furniture from a place called Michael a bears furniture. Um, and that was another commercial as a kid that always stuck out to me. And it was like, uh, sh- it was, I'm trying to think of exactly how it went off the top of my head, but he's like, make Michael a bear furniture. will save you money. <laughs> and he like, he just throws a bunch of money in the air. And I always thought it was hilarious. Um, cause we bought our furniture from there and we did not save money. Uh, but that was mine. If you do, you have yours yet, or do you want me to go into that story about what you walked into before we recorded? Oh, I want to hear the story. Okay, I don't know right. that I had mine or not, but I want to hear the story. Cool. So, I mean, you you were here for for part of it. So, as this is happening, right earlier today, um, I walk into the room where my my lovely wife is um, making some things for our daughter's birthday party. She's just you know putting together random stuff, and I'm I'm a random weird guy, as you guys probably have seen by now or you will get to see um and i I walk in the room and i start doing the frankie and johnny's like you know i'm shuffling and i'm quoting the commercial and i'm like i got the 50 dollars and um she is looking at me like i am the weirdest person she has no idea what's going on and i'm like yeah like frankie and johnny's and she's like what like what are you talking about and i was just i'm gonna be honest i i reconsidered my entire life for a second there (laughs) um i had to show her the Show her the YouTube of the uh, of the commercial, um, which she reacted to with just like shock. Like, why is this a thing? Um, and I don't know if that's just that I'm old and she's younger than me. And maybe I married, you know, way outside of what I should have. Or uh, <laughs> if she's she, just lived in a bubble. <laughs> What's no, she could definitely hear me. <laughs> she's upstairs. She can hear me. So I'll hear about this later. But um, yeah, that's... You know, that's a little backstory there. But as far as like, as far as you, it could be anything, right? Like somebody else I saw on Twitter. Do you remember uh, LimeWire? Yeah, I remember LimeWire. People don't still use LimeWire, do they? No, but you know what? I think, I think they do. Uh, you have your laptop in front of you. I think it's an e, uh, um, EFT, NFT, N- <laughs> EFT. It's an NFT marketplace now, I believe. I'm pretty sure. It is. Yeah, boom. Mic drop. But, okay, but still today's kids will not understand what LimeWire was or Napster. Yeah. The risk of giving your computer the worst virus in the world. It wasn't a risk. It was a guarantee. (laughs) Whatever song you were downloading that turned into some random background noise. I mean, I feel like the obvious answer here would be rotary phones. I had a rotary phone in my house. Um, Yeah. Phones with cords at all. Yeah. Imagine somebody having to call you for people that... I don't think we got anybody that's that young listening to this, but imagine it's someone calling you and you have a house phone that you can't take into privacy. It only, it only goes as far as the wire goes. Yeah. I remember somebody would call my grandma's house. I'd answer the phone 
and I'd have to squeeze it through the back door, shut the back door. <laughs> Hopefully the wire didn't get cut in half while, <laughs> while I'm talking on the phone. <laughs> or you accidentally pull it out of the yeah. actual base. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've been there. I've yeah. definitely been there. I've, I mean, looking at the comments, trying to see. Yeah, so AOL. Um, that was AOL. the first thing I thought of too, was like AIM, AOL. Insert, um, insert the sound here. <laughs> right, or the, the weird dial-up. <laughs> Um, hopefully that comes through with audio, but yeah. Um, or like, you know, going to what you just said, and I'm sure everybody thinks of this based on what you were saying with the rotary phone, but having to call somebody like, I remember when I was 11 or 10 or whatever, and I had my, like one of my first girlfriends, um, calling the house and her dad picks up the phone. I'm like, Oh, is Callie there? I, I had a girl that I was dating, which is weird to say, cause I mean, this is pre Katrina. I was 11 years old when Katrina happened, so dating, mm-hmm. you know, uh, in air quotes. Uh, called the called my grandma's house one time, and luckily I answered the phone. But as soon as I picked up, she was cursing me out. <laughs> so if if, my, if anybody else had picked up the phone, that would have been an interesting conversation. That is a bold thing to do. <laughs> Keep in mind, we're about nine, ten years old. <laughs> wow, I, I'll I never feel- forget it. Never there, forget it. There's so much to unpack there, and I have so many comments, and I don't know if this person knows who they are if they listen. I'm sure they're not listening, but no, they probably I couldn't, dodged I, a major pull. I couldn't even tell you her name. I don't At remember. Years old. <laughs> Jesus. And so I see answering machines. There's still answering machines. It's just voicemails. Yeah. Cursive. There you go. How about that? <laughs> But, uh, you know, that aside, I just wanted to start with something fun. So I figured that would be a fun, a fun little Kickstarter here. Um, we can dive into some other things. I know, you know, there was, there was NFL football tonight. Um, didn't watch it. Yeah. We've had the Brandon Ingram, you know, saga, or I should say KD saga, but everybody knows that we're not going to trade Brandon Ingram for KD. So like, I think both of us are kind of exhausted with that, I'm over that, that discussion. Um, so it's something I didn't really want to touch on. I do have an article that I put out on it. If you really want to read about it, um, I think we're all kind of in the same boat here. Um, and there was some stuff that I think you wanted to touch on. What do you have over there? Uh, so one thing that I wrote down was the uh, 2023 Hall of Fame. Um, hmm. I guess I don't want to say class because it's not the class, but like the first time <clears throat> eligible players, uh, mostly because Jari Evans is eligible. Hmm. I don't think he gets in on the Packer first try. Great. <laughs> Packer great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think he gets in on the first try, but I mean, I think I it brings up a reveal. Sorry, I didn't it, no, it brings up an interesting conversation of outside of Drew Brees. Are there any? Is that hmm. the next one? Drew gets in before Jari. I'm willing to bet that. Yeah, but if you, before if we if you don't want to do the local stuff yet, we can just go through the list real quick. Yeah, let's let's go through the list real quick. But I do like that question. We can we can circle back to that. So we have. Uh, this is the best first-year eligible players for 2023, so it's not all of them. Uh, this is SportingNews.com. Joe Thomas, uh, the tackle from the Browns. Mm-hmm. James Harrison, everybody knows where he played. Uh, Dwight Freeney, Darrell Rivas, Jari Evans, Elvis Dumerville from, I remember him as a Bronco. Yeah, that's, that's what I thought of first. Uh, Chris Johnson, the running back. Matt Forte was another Dude. reason I brought this up Roll because wave. of Matt Forte. Uh, Cam Chancellor, Carson Palmer, Shane Leckler. And then, um, yeah, so that's the main the main uh, first-year guys for next year. And you know, it, go ahead. I mean, that list is interesting, right? Like, I, all those names to me, and it's probably because I grew up with them. You know, that's and nostalgia. That, see, and that's what it is. We're getting to that point now yeah. where it's the guys that we grew up. Because on top of this, you have guys from last year or the year before. Reggie Wayne, Torrey Holt, Andre Johnson, Devin Hester. Yeah. Um, I don't remember the rest of them, but just it's getting tough. Yeah. To Because uh, to me, almost all of these guys deserve to be in there. Yeah. yeah. Joe Thomas yeah. deserves to be in it just based off of – he spent his entire career with the Browns. He could have been the worst t- tackle in history, and I'd be okay with it. Poor uh, guy. James Harrison deserves to be in based off of that one play in the Super Bowl. <laughs> I mean, okay, that's fair. <laughs> I was thinking of his career, but yes, like that's and and yeah. that he plays uh, volleyball with medicine balls. Yeah, 
Yeah, and same, that. and he's in the shit. You know, shout out to my wrestling fans out there. He's in the show Heels. If you if you want to watch a show that feels like it's a Hallmark show, but it's also kind of like a wrestling show, check it out. Um, yeah, keep going. Fre- Fre- Freeney deserves to be in. Uh, Revis, obviously. Honestly, Jari and Elvis are probably the two that are. Yeah, and, and I think that too. And but I'm looking at Jari, and I'm like, you know, being a Saints fan, I, I try to not. I never try hard. to let. It's hard to not be biased. Yeah, <laughs> I never try to let bias come into play when I'm talking about things, and I try to make sure I'm like cognizant of that. I, I think you're right, though. I think him and Elvis are probably but, the two outsiders. But right I there. mean, I've heard outside people say that he's one of the best. Yeah, to ever do it. Uh, he's he. I mean, I think he gets in the, the Hall of Fame for sure. But when is the is yeah. the question? Do you do you think he gets in before Drew? First ballot. So Drew is when is Drew eligible? Five years from last year. So last year was his first year. Yeah. So this year, next year, next year. I think it's possible he gets in before Drew. Cause I think he's one of those guys that if he doesn't get in before Drew, then I guess, it, just, it just keeps like stretching out. I know? guess like, it's hard to to say without seeing the more upcoming classes because yeah. it seems like they try not to put too many of the same position in one class. Yeah. I feel. I mean, it's the only reason I can say why Tory Holt isn't in already because that doesn't make sense to me. Um. But yeah, that guy's hands alone. Or Reggie like, Wayne. Has anybody ever seen Tory Holt's? Have you seen Tory Holt's hands? No, I have not. I mean, good lord! Like he's caught some balls. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah. Um, so on this list, Forte, I don't think gets in. Yeah, I don't think Forte, and that breaks my heart. You know, being a. But he's. I mean, he's mentioned, which is that's actually a shock to me. If. I never would have known when Matt Forte was Hall of Fame eligible. And yeah. honestly, I would have told you it happened three years ago. Yeah. I didn't realize it's only been five years since he retired. But I, on this list, who had, give me two that have the best chance to get in. Because, I mean, at least one of these guys is going in on the first try. Oh, Probably yeah. two or three. Yeah, I'm, I'm, going, I'm going Joe Thomas. I, I think he's a shoe in. Um, I just keep, keep scrolling. I mean, James Harrison, yeah, but like, I want to see, I don't want to just throw that out there. I think Dwight Freeney. I say Thomas, Freeney, and Revis. Yeah, and Revis. Yeah, for sure. Cam Chancellor is an interesting one just because of how good that defense was. Does yeah. he get, does he get lumped into the defense as a whole or they look at his individual in, career? In my opinion, I say no. I say that, I say that he shouldn't be an easy one. I think he's a phenomenal player, yeah. but like, I, I don't know if he's a shoe um, in, you know. Leckler is one of the best punters of all time, but they're not putting a punter in on the first try. No. But so going back to so we have Jari. Am I missing somebody that would be between him and Drew? <laughs> Probably, and I I don't know. I can't think off the top of my head who's who's like retired in the last That would that would go in as a saint. Like when did Jeremy Shockey retire? <laughs> and is he a, I don't know that he's a Hall of Famer. Sorry, you just it made me laugh because there's a subset <laughs> of fans out there that hear that name and they're like angry already. Um, Help us win a Super Bowl. I don't care what he did after that I, or before that. You know what though? <laughs> and I don't. I don't mean to go off on a tangent. I, maybe this is the perfect opportunity to go off on a tangent because this is who effing knows, and that's kind of what we're here for. But um, I don't know if that's even true. People blame him for the. Let's just say it. People blame him for the the bounty being the bounty gate rat. But I believe, and I could be wrong, I believe I read afterwards that he wasn't. Like, he didn't say anything. Do we still have a ring? We do still have a ring. Then I don't care. Yeah. That Those seasons after that were, I mean. Yeah, I don't really care. You know. I mean, I, I thought it was nonsense. I thought it was BS. I hate that the NFL stuck it to us in the way they did. But, um, you know, seeing how they've treated other things since then, I, I've realized that it wasn't. Like I know a lot of Saints fans feel like, oh, Goodell had it out for Peyton or he has it out for us. I think Good- Goodell, in that sense of like dishing out punishment, it didn't matter. Like he's all he was always all over the place. It, it, it was always like prisoner of the moment type thing. Um, was it still Goodell was, at that time? Yeah, Goodell or was it Tagliabue. No, Goodell was. It was Goodell. Yeah, it was Goodell. I, don't, I didn't remember. No, Tagliabue stepped down. Right, um, right Katrina before. year. Katrina year. Yeah, because Tagliabue was the reason, you know. Sing, that's right. That's, what I'm, think, that's what I'm thinking of. I yeah. knew we were tied to him in some kind of way. Yeah, he was the reason the Saints that's stayed right. after Katrina. Um, but no, I mean, shitty situation. We can move on. Um, yeah. Uh, so only outside of Drew, I can't think of. 
I think there's some guys that if they stay on the path they're on now that we currently have could get in. But as far as past players, Vilma. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking of Vilma. I, mean, I was thinking of Vilma. But um, I, don't, I don't. Does, if, I mean, Matt Forte's on there. Does, does Reggie Bush ever get on there? Deuce McAllister? Colston should. Col- Colston. Yeah. Will he? I don't know. But Colston should. Yeah, I have Colston's actually the only. Um, I think Colston's got a better case than Deuce. Because I don't know where yeah. Deuce stands league wide as far as where his stats are. Yeah. No, that's fair. Not, that's I, not that fair. I know where Colston stands, but I don't know. No, I mean, I, I agree. Like, and I, I don't, none of them have a super compelling case to me. I mean, as a Saints fan, like, I think Colston is the I most Colston underrated. Has a, has a case. Yeah. Jimmy would be. But Jimmy fell off. He that did. was the problem. He did. Like, he wasn't relevant the day he left the Saints. That's true. Yeah. At me, tweet me, whatever. He no, was, that's true. He hasn't been good but since he left. I don't he think actually that's... wasn't good his last two years with the Saints. Yeah, but that's I don't think that's debatable at all. Um, yeah, I would say Colson's probably the only other one. He'll be eligible before Drew. Mm-hmm. Should be coming up soon. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how long ago he retired, but yeah. I mean, good point. Um, Colston and Vilma was the first one I thought of, to be fair, when you, when you asked a couple minutes ago. Um, Colston, I could see that. Um, um, it, from then, it, you know, outside of that, like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't have anything major. Yeah, I think that's the ones. Um, so, I guess moving on. Yeah. I guess since we're, since we're in the local sports topics – we didn't stay out of them very long, by the way. Um, it's I mean, kind, well, this is this is kind of local, kind of not. Uh, last week we talked about how running back was your biggest concern. Yeah. Which also Malcolm Brown's gone, so you're welcome. Yeah. Not that I did anything, but I know you're you're happy about that. I am happy about that. Um, <laughs> so I saw Kareem Hunt asked for a trade, and Josh Jacobs were both uh, was rumored mm-hmm. as a possible trade candidate. Now, mm-hmm. obviously. Those two would be, yeah. I mean, Hunt would be awesome. Yeah, uh, yes. If as long as you're willing to overlook things he did uh, at this point, are you putting me on the spot? No, I'm just asking. I mean, because I'll talk about it. So, just... so of the two, if it's if it's those two, mm-hmm. obviously you would take them. Oh yeah, for sure. Do you have a preference? Is there anybody else you've had in mind that might come in and? Or how do you feel now that we've been through training camp for no, a I, week? Do I, you feel any better? No, I don't feel any better. Or that Kamara's stuff seems to be getting pushed back further and further, and it seems like he'll play this year. I, I think it's a bit of a relief that Kamara seems to be okay for this year. You you don't know yet, but um, I think I don't I don't know if that ever really mattered to me because I think I was looking yeah, at the yeah. group as a whole. Yeah, we did differ on that a little bit because I did say that it doesn't if he plays, then I'm not very concerned. Yeah, I mean, concerned a little, but I'm not. I, I think not I'm, like you are. Yeah, well, I think I'm concerned because if I look at, it, I mean, you do have some of the younger guys that could blow up, but outside of Ingram, who's aging, um, and Kamara, who's more of a receiving back, who has had to take some games off. Um, for you know injuries here and there, um, you don't have anything. So you know one of them goes down, and then what? Yeah. So I, I think that's what I'm worried about. I, I think that you need, you're gonna need three solid, not like phenomenal, but three solid running backs. Obviously, Kamara's your guy. So I, I guess what I would ask is, so Kareem Hunt and Josh Jacobs are not yeah. nobodies. No, no, no. Let's compare. Them so to it that. will. What I, what I'm saying is, would it? <laughs> Is it enough? You're going to have to give up something of value to mm-hmm. get both of those, either one of those, I should say. Is it that big of an issue to you that you would give up a draft pick? It's not going to be a first-round pick. But So Kareem Hunt wants an extension, so you got to pay him. Right. Are you willing to have to pay him and give up a decent pick to get him? Because I'd imagine, I mean, Josh Jacobs is young. Right. And he's not like he's not good. Right. I'd say at worst third round pick to so, get him. I have, to, I have a couple of thoughts here. Um, first of all, I'm going to pick between the two. If I have to pick between Kareem Hunt and Josh Jacob, Jacobs for, for the Saints, I'm taking Josh Jacobs. I agree. Um, 
second of all, if we're talking about trading a draft, if, if we do go Kareem Hunt for whatever reason, which I don't hate, but if we're talking about trading a draft pick for Kareem Hunt and then paying him, if we want to get into this, the discussion of like paying any running back, I'm, I'm here for it. I will die on the hill of you don't pay I guess pay you don't technically backs. have to pay him. He does want an extension, but you can trade. Yeah. It's not like he can say no to coming. Well, isn't that why he asked for a trade, though? Or is it just like playing time or like just the, the overall? I feel like it's, I I feel like it's it. both. He said it's because, or they say it's because he didn't get his extension. But um, I don't think he's threatening to sit out. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't, I feel like he's, he feel, I, he went to Cleveland because he didn't have any choice at, yeah. at that time. Yeah. And I feel like now he feels like he did what he had to do. Yeah. Prove that he can play again, which I don't think was ever a question. But he, I guess he feels that he's at the point now where he deserves to get paid like he would have had he not like screwed he, up. I don't know, you know. <laughs> I, I'm trying not to be like hot take ish or like it's not a hot take, but like trying not to be like negative Nancy or negative negative Neil. I don't know what a guy would be, but you um, don't seem to be a fan of Kareem Hunt. It's not that I'm not a fan of Kareem Hunt. I actually really like Kareem Hunt. I'm not a fan of paying running backs in general. I don't think that you pay running backs top dollar. He can come here. He can get an extension. I'll give him an ex- whatever. But, like, if we're talking top dollar for a running back, he, yeah. can, he can kick rocks. He can stay in Well, you, almost, you can't. You can't give anybody, any running back, big money. Not yeah. with the players you're going to have to pay. If they gave a running back big money before they paid CJ, the fan base would. CJ Gardner Johnson. Yeah, That's what we're talking about? It'd okay. go crazy. Did you see me perk up a little bit when you said that? Yeah, I did. I have some thoughts on that. Um, it's on the list, but uh, I, uh, <laughs> but to, I mean, I guess to close to close this out, I don't. I would love Josh Jacobs, number one. I mean, and then if you lost um, Kamara, I mean, he was compared to Kamara coming into the league. Yeah, and he does do a lot of what he does. Yeah, you probably don't lose much. I mean. I don't want to say that because that's almost knocking Kamara because Kamara is here. Oh, Jacobs yeah. is definitely a tier below. But um, I, I think, so, too, when I view the two, though, like, yes, I know you said they were compared, but I think just seeing who Josh Jacobs has been in the league and who Kamara is in the league, I think they have two different styles, I, in my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong, but. Yeah, they're definitely different. Jacobs is more of a runner than a receiver, I would say. Right, which but, is another another conversation, right? Like, I think Kamara is a runner. I think I think he's a great between the tackles runner. I just think that <laughs> I feel like I don't want to go on a tangent about. I love Kamara, but no, like, it's, uh, I feel like Kamara knows when to try and when not to try. You know, he's he's not that guy that's gonna like put his head down and try and run through people. Whereas I, I think I look at Josh Jacobs as the guy that he doesn't care. He's just gonna run through you. I guess the overall point to my question is. How I, I mean, you said how much of a concern it is, but what are you willing to mm. give up in order to yeah fix to solve your concern? Because I'm not willing to give up a lot. It not depends. if we have Kamara. If you don't have Kamara, I'd give up. I think even with considering Kamara, we don't have a first round pick already next year, you can find picks. Not that this would cost a first round pick, but nah, no, it shouldn't cost a first round pick for either one of those guys. I would guys. say third at worst. Yeah, I was I was thinking if I'm giving up a third round pick, I'm okay with that. I don't hate that. You know, especially for Josh Jacobs. Come on here. Come on come on home. It ain't home, but like Yeah. Bring that ass here, boy. I think overall, because I'm less concerned, I would ho- I would hold out. I wouldn't make a move for any big name. Yeah. Running back. Well, Unless and, something happens with Kamara and then you know you're not going to have him. Because the team is obviously built to win this year. So if Kamara goes, you got to replace it. You can't go the whole season or yeah. half the season with just Ingram. Well, and, and to, you know, bring up another another point, you know, I'm sitting here saying, oh, you could trade a third. You don't have to. I think you can wait. Like, I think you wait until week two, week three, and figure out what you have and figure out what you want to do. Um there's going to be guys that get released right. that that's, you can bring That's in. where I'm at. I would prefer to wait to see if, like I mentioned last week, maybe Sony Michelle, somebody you were already interested in, is in a backfield that's loaded. Yeah. Gets cut. or I mean, somebody of value is going to get cut. If you just want to receive him back, I've seen people say, hey, or he actually might already be a free agent, Tariq Cohen. I don't remember if he is or not. Is he a free? He better not be a free agent. Not on, what? Are you kidding me? 
See how quick I went to my see how quick I went to my laptop. Um, Ain't no way. Did he get hurt? I think he got hurt. He though. well, he was hurt last year. Did he get hurt? He did get hurt again this off season. Uh, no, he is a free agent. Look at that. Um, I don't oh, know. this was May seventeenth. He tore his Achilles. So during a uh, yeah, that's, that's right. right. That's right. Instagram okay. I knew that. Tore. Like when I was thinking, I was like, wait a minute. Yeah. Um, okay. No, that makes a lot more but, sense. But yeah, it's so just forgetting him specifically. The overall point of waiting for there's going to be some veteran guys. There's yeah. always a surprise cut or two that happens. I would hold out. Shit, you could even go into the season, go a few weeks. If it's not, if you feel like you need somebody, because if Ingr- if Kamara's there, he's healthy, and Ingram is still Ingram. Yeah, and if you if you have any any of those other three guys throughout the preseason that step up, contribute a little bit. Yeah, I think I think you're you're comfortable with it. Um, I think it's going to be you know I I don't, I don't think you got to go out tomorrow and do it. If if they did do it, I wouldn't be upset. But like, um, I, I think that's fair. I think waiting is fair. Yeah, um, I, I and just, we can we can put a bow on that. I mean, I think we talked yeah. About I was just bringing week. it up because of how. Uh, that's why I wrote it down was because I know how concerned you were at running back. I thought yeah. it was interesting. I think the real conversation is, um, you know, you, and you made a point the other day, like linebacker. Yeah. Especially oh, with. Not getting. I mean, I'm sure P. Warner will be okay, but it's a groin injury. It lingers. It lingers. It definitely lingers. Take off the I don't know how stuff. much he was going to contribute to Marco Jackson, but he's yeah. injured reserve, well, I think. Well, so it's yeah. we're we're in trouble. If Warner say Warner's not ready for week one, you got <laughs> Demario, and is it Zach Bond? Yeah, we yeah we did that last week too. <laughs> uh, or Caden Ellis? I don't know. Uh, Caden Ellis, yeah. Um, I don't know. It's, you know what sticks out to me is that they um, even before I was worried, which maybe I should have been worried. Even before I was worried, they were bringing in linebackers a lot and like working them out, and like that should have been a sign to me like they're not comfortable. So like I, pro- I'm one of those guys, and I know it's like it's not a new regime, but it, it feels different. Um, I've always just trusted, you know, Mickey Loomis. I trust Sean Payton. Same way with the Pels. Like at this point, I didn't used to, but same with the Pels at this point. I just I just trust whatever the hell they want to do. Um, but I pay attention to what they do, and that gives me an idea of like what they're worried about. I overlooked it. It's um, the weakest spot on the team. Yeah. And it's not close. Yeah. No, I even though you're concerned at running back. No, no, no. It's not close. I think I think that you've you've kind of swayed me and I'm you know looking into things a little more. I think I I somewhat agree. Like, like I think I'm actually worried. Yeah. Especially because last year that was one of the biggest strengths. <laughs> I think I said that last week too. But yeah, and how I'm I mean, this is gonna bring up people. We should have signed Quan, this and that. Let's, I mean, he's not exactly a perfect bill of health either, you know? Yeah. But they got him. I, that's another one. Roquan Smith is uh, wanting a trade. That's yeah. going to take some some picks. <laughs> yeah, that'll be, that'll be a lot But, harder. I mean, that, no, you, that's – I'd be doing – at this point right now, I'd be doing whatever they have to to find somebody of real value. For sure. And I don't have any names. Because, I mean, I don't, I don't know who, who's, who you can possibly get. But if you're going to make a move, that needs to be the move before anything else. Yeah. And I, then, I agree. I mean, you I go, think, go ahead. I, well, I was going to say, I think if you give me, if, if you want to go back to the conversation we were just having, if you give me the choice between, hey, you trade for a top-tier linebacker or you trade for a top-tier running back, like, I'm going to take the linebacker every time. Especially because, no like, you know, the defense – is what's going to drive this team. I know the, like we're looking at the offense and we're like, Oh, they look better. Um, but we're relying on the defense to be who they were last year in order to get us over the hump. Yeah, because you don't just need one. Right. You need multiple. Right. I mean, I know they like Caden Ellis, but I don't trust him. I don't trust Zach Bond. Not I don't trust that. anybody not named Demario. Not on that level. I'm I mean, not a hundred. Like, yeah, like, I, I, like, I mean, I do. I like Pete Warner, but I'm not a hundred percent sold that he's going to be great. <laughs> Off of one season, I you, love I love P. Warner. We'll Stephon see. Anthony was good for a year. No, he wasn't. He was good for one year, no, he and wasn't. then they changed his position, and he was god awful. He got like an interception or two one year, and a bunch he of he was all right, and they thought he was phenomenal. He was all right, but anyway, yeah. So that's uh <laughs> that does have me a little concerned. I don't know if it's to the point where I'm like, I mean, do you ta- I I could take a win or two away 
because linebacker plays. How much can you mask linebacker play? Well, I was hoping. You do have a lot of safeties that I was can play linebacker. Linebacker that CJ slides position. down a lot. And, you know, um, we did. We kind of brought that up last week too. That you can. We pl- did. You got a few guys that can play that role. I, but I, I think we, we need to move on some, to some other subjects. These are two yeah. things that we talked about last week. Uh, but one thing that you brought up that stuck out to me a little bit was the Quan thing. I want to, I want to, I want to hurt some people's feelings or touch some <laughs> nerves or whatever. I don't mean to, but like I feel like we're gonna. That's why I say that. Um, let's talk about college football a little bit. I know, you're a Miami guy. Um, But I I wanted to, uh, one conversation that came up with a friend of mine the other night was revolving around LSU football. Um, Obviously, LSU is ranked out of the top 25. Miami is ranked in the top 25. How um, accurate do you think the top 25 is that came out? And Let's let's pull it up. Yeah. Cause I've got some thoughts and like every, obviously, you know, you've seen, you saw his tweet, I think earlier where he's like, not an LSU guy, blah, blah, blah. And then gave his feelings on something. And I always oh, preface that, like, everything the, with the like 2019 LSU offense versus the 2020 Bama offense. Yeah. That, that offense we won't would get kill. Into that. Yeah. All right. So um, top five, Bama, Ohio state, Georgia, Clemson, Notre Dame, no surprises. Actually, I don't think Clemson should be top four because I don't trust their quarterback. He, I know he's uh, looked at as one of the better ones, but he's, I watch a lot of ACC football, whereas people down here watch a lot of SEC football. Mm-hmm. And uh, sounds like you live DJ Un- boring life. Ungulale- I don't, not, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I mean, maybe he gets better, but he was just okay. Clemson wasn't that good last year, so yeah. being top four is, you know, interesting to me. The thing with LSU, I know they got a transfer quarterback, and I don't know his name off the top of my head. Jaden Daniels. Yeah, I think him. Um, I don't know that he's – I think that's the whole – I think that is the one thing holding LSU back. They didn't have a good season last year. Yeah. Keep going. I'm, I'm listening. And I, I just, that's all it is, really. I mean, they're obviously – they're LSU, they're always going to have talent all over the field. But if you don't have a, a good quarterback, mm-hmm. you're not – you're just not get you're not going anywhere in the season. And I think as soon as – he could be good, which I don't think they've even named him a starter yet. I don't follow LSU all that much. No, uh, I think I think the belief right now is that Miles Brennan is the starting quarterback. And if it's Miles Brennan, they're not a top twenty-five team. Oh my God! What's hilarious to me. So, <laughs> all right, I'm so glad you we're, said people that. People are gonna. I, no, 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 we're no, not no, making no, no, it to no. episode three. I am so glad you said that. Okay, so I have a very a very good friend of mine who I, I love. And near, this is this is not us hating on LSU. Let's be very clear. I was I was accused of being a hater the other night, which I, I guess maybe I do hate sometimes. I, I feel like I'm a realist, but you know, I do hate LSU. I'll you know I'll say I don't that. I don't hate LSU. I hate um, LSU. I but just go ahead. I'm not a fan, but um. But no, so the other night I was talking to a buddy of mine and we got on the topic of Miles Brennan um, and he was, he, well, it, it continued into the topic of Miles Brennan. It started with the top 25 thing um, and he was talking about, you know, there's been worse LSU teams that were led by worse quarterbacks and then, and then he also made the comparison that, you know, Joe Burrow's first year, he was not great and people looked at him as someone who should not be the starter. He wasn't getting drafted. He yeah. was fifth round or undrafted. Yeah, and those and those are both valid arguments, but my argument was Miles Brennan has had four or five years now, and he hasn't proven a goddamn thing. Yeah, um, he was in like the recruiting class of two thousand one. Yeah, like we, <laughs> yeah. If if we're we're if if they're relying on Miles Brennan, God not help a top you. twenty. I, I mean, maybe the rest of the team is – I don't know enough about the rest of the team. I know they have good receivers because they always have good receivers. I, I still – I don't I don't. I, don't I just know don't enough. know enough about I them. still think that they're a top 25 team, even with Miles Brennan at quarterback. But um, they're not a playoff team. Like, not even close. No, that's – yeah. Not even close. We so, can move on. So, that's, that's actually what I was well, hoping I was, would come But you asked me about my – I guess you mentioned Miami. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So LSU did receive some votes to get into the top 25. They were one, two, three, four, f- the fifth highest, or fourth, no, fifth highest to get votes to get into the top 25. Um, so it's not like they're being completely overlooked. Um, Miami's at 17. Uh, I'd have them a little lower. Listen. We do have what? So my hot take of the college football season is that Miami's quarterback, Tyler Van Dyke, will be 
a first round pick and one of the top three quarterbacks in the class. Uh, you probably don't even know who that is. I've heard of him. Okay, I know the name, <laughs> but a lot of people don't. Um, he's very good, and we had. I mean, we got Mario Cristobal from Oregon, whose Oregon is year after year a top twenty-five team, and I think he's just changed the whole program. So definitely top twenty-five. We play that ACC. The schedule is going to be easy. I just I would have him lower just because. I don't know. I got to see it on the field. Everything yeah. in the offseason has been great. I got to see it on the field. Texas, I'm sure they won't end up in the top 25 because yeah, that's what Texas. That's, you know, that's something that jumps out to me, right? Like, it's, <laughs> it's one of those teams you're I'm after pretty certain year. this one means they received a vote to be <laughs> number one. Which is a whole other conversation, <laughs> they're at, right? They are at 18 and received one vote. To, it, it had to be somebody from Texas. I, had to be. I've, I've got... <laughs> Not an obsession, but kind of like a, a hate for these people that vote on this stuff. Um, some of them, they're, just, they're so dumb. Like, I don't understand what goes into the mindset with this, with the, the Major League Baseball Hall of Fame. Like, just all these random things where people get a vote and they hang their hat on being a person that gets a vote. And, like, they're the very people who probably should not get a vote because they just... They vote on emotion or Shouldn't they vote on... the people that get votes be the only... Be the people who have... I guess it'd be weird for the top 25, but say um, MVP, NFL MVP. Yeah. I feel like the only people that should be allowed to vote are, for, are former MVPs or former players of the game. That's a that's a cool point. Why I can not? see that. Why yeah. not? I mean, I, get, I don't know that you can do current players because then they're biased. I don't know. But I feel like there's a way you could do it to where it's not just randoms. It's like media people. Why should media people that never played football except for when they were children right. get to vote on these awards. Yeah. No, I agree. I, I mean, totally maybe agree. NFL MVP isn't the best thing. Or maybe it is because Drew Brees was robbed. We won't go there. Um, <laughs> Twice. But, yeah, I mean, I'm with you on that. I just I don't understand why these people get votes. Yeah, I don't. It is what it is. We don't have to beat a dead horse there. But I, I'll, you'll find there's a theme as we as we go through here. I mean, there was a guy that came out over the offseason, and I'm not the biggest Aaron Rodgers fan as a person, but he said he would not vote Aaron Rodgers. For, this was actually the end of last year, I believe. He said he wouldn't vote Aaron Rodgers for MVP because he disagreed with his beliefs on COVID, which yeah, that's not nothing. getting into that. Yeah. But that's not what you're voting on. Why are you getting a vote? Like, if you can come out and say that and still get to keep your vote, that's absurd. I agree. I totally agree. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I got I got nothing else. Yeah. Um, I mean, everything I got is pretty much local stuff, so I don't know what you want to... Uh... No, no, we could do that. I, I didn't really, you know... Well, you perked up when I said Chauncey. Mm. I did, because he's... he's. Um... I have trading Chauncey down because it was a big topic. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there's... You know, I've seen a lot of people tweeting, going back to what you were talking about earlier, trading for a running back, right? I've seen a lot of people tweeting about trading Chauncey for a running back. Um, you know... The argument is, hey, he's a nickel. Even if he's a good nickel, he's a nickel. Like, trade him. It's fine. He doesn't deserve to get paid because he's a nickel. I, I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. Uh, but I think it's interesting that he's had a rough camp, it seems like. Um, you know, he had the personal issue, which people thought he was holding out for a contract, which who knows. Well, he um, is – I don't know how it was this week, but he was lim- – like. Not holding out, holding in, I guess you could say, because yeah. he was limiting what he was doing in practice. But he was there right. until he had his personal issue. So he was somewhat doing things because of his, uh, or not doing things because of his contract, but he's not causing the, any issues. Yeah. I, I think, that, you know, gun to my head, that's going to be a good phrase that I'm going to keep using as we go through this. <laughs> gun to my head, um, I trade him. I, I, it was hard for me to say that because I know that I know I know I know the feeling I know everybody loves him I love him I love his his tenacity I love his personality well, um, I love the play he's given us but like I think I've seen somewhere that we've never won a game that he didn't play yeah I saw that too which is kind of crazy which goes against everything I just said about trading him but like he's the dude, I think I'm a big believer in culture mattering 
I am he too. Is, I am too. He I am is. Too. I mean, without Heaven Mike, because originally it was, I'd say it was like Mike Ingram and Kamara pretty much built that on the side, you know, dancing on the sideline, all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. And then he came in and he is New Orleans. He, yeah. Yes. And I can't imagine. I mean, he's going to get paid at, he, I'm sure he wants to get paid at the top of his position, but. That's not going to be that much. The nickel position or the cornerback that's, position? Yeah. Which I, that's he actually... The, no, it's it's between nickel and safety. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what I meant. Um, I meant DB. He shouldn't you know, get like top, top safety DB. money. No. But he's tweeted out, don't forget they drafted me as a safety. But he's also tweeted that he's the top nickel in the game. Yeah. So, so like we're going to get it. This is the whole Jimmy Graham yeah. wide receiver type which situation are you? again. Because <laughs> if we're paying you as a nickel, sure, that's fine. I just... I don't think he's going to... He's going to cost the money, but I don't think it's going to be something that's outrageous. Like, I think it should just get done. You keep him. Yeah. He'll have, tr- I mean, without seeing whether Elante Taylor's good, I feel like you say you keep him. If if he comes out and he's. Uh, Unless he sits out. I mean, it doesn't really, like, you got time, right? Like, which it doesn't seem like he's going to sit out. No. I just, I can't trade him without knowing there's a replacement. That's, and if you. I mean, I guess the replacement right now would be Taylor or PJ. I think you would hope it's PJ. I don't want you to go on your rant about. I'm not ranting about PJ, PJ being the real PJ again. He's not. His but, name's not PJ. <laughs> That's fine. But uh, Kenneth Lamar. Yeah, we're gonna disagree on that. I don't think that you. Sh- at this moment, I say no. Okay. But that's just because I, I, outside of what he is well, as a player, it's what he brings on the field. Maybe I should give more insight to my my said like thought that you should trade him i I don't mean like tomorrow (laughs) you know like i mean like if if it comes to the point where he's like holding out not wanting to play if for whatever reason it becomes a distraction or a problem um if you know you're not gonna agree like you you have an idea of what's how this is gonna play out right like you've talked to his agent this shit doesn't just come out of nowhere ever i know people like to act like it does it doesn't come out of nowhere um if you have an idea and you know how it's going to play out and you know that you need to trade him, trade him. I don't... <laughs> go get go get a running back. Go get a linebacker. Yeah. Yeah, that's one thing. If you could... If you're trading him for... I'm not trading him for a running back. No, it would be a linebacker. Yeah, I, I would, if you're... Yeah, I would tra- and it would have to be a, a good linebacker. Like Roquan? Like him and some picks? I don't know, I don't know how that, the trade works. But I like, could be convinced on that. Um... I don't know. It's tough for me. It's, I just think he's so valuable. It's the culture thing. It's, it, That's it, my it hang is up. That. That's my hang up too. If we're just talking a player who provides X, Y, and Z, I'm like, oh yeah, whatever. Like, yeah, I think you can. I mean, he's very good at his position, but I think he can, he's replaceable. Most players are. Yeah. But yeah, it's the culture thing, especially when you're in this period where you're transitioning from one head coach to another. I know it's not a whole lot of change, but. The point of hiring Dennis Allen was to keep things the same. Yeah. I just, I, it bothers me so much that the way the Saints handle contracts, that they put them off. All these other teams. Fuck that cap. All the other teams do this where a player plays well, they'll extend them before it comes time. If he's going into his fifth year, they'll extend them between the fourth and fifth year. The Saints always want to wait. Yeah, and make it tough. He's gonna go out in free agency. What I'm sure is gonna happen. He's gonna go out. Somebody's gonna offer him something, bring it back to us, and they'll decide whether they want to match it or not. They'll let the league set the market. Yeah, is what I'm sure is gonna happen. But I don't I think, know. I agree. Like I do. Actually, I don't dislike that. I actually think I do like that because I I think that it's worked out in our favor. But, some, but sometimes some guys just I guess and maybe in his situation it's it makes sense because. What does he get? What is he gonna like? You said, what is he getting paid as? Right. So I guess in his situation, it's a little different. But sometimes guys just deserve to be paid. Like, I don't know. It's I don't I like, can't like think. Who? I can't think of an example at the moment. It's just like I don't know. Did we did we wait to pay Mike after his after this like after his contract was up? I don't remember. I think we did. I think I think that I think we did. And that's too, like that's what I'm talking about. I didn't like want to he say the wrong thing. It was very you traded Brandon Cooks and made it very clear that Mike Thomas was going to be your guy. Mm-hmm. 
there wasn't a replacement. So why did we wait? You, I mean, and wasn't it after his or he? No, he broke his records after he signed his contract. Yeah, but he still had good years. Like, and then it's like when it happens with Drew, you wait to pay him. We win a Super Bowl. He gets MVP. Then you got to pay him even more. It's like it's just like I don't know. It, I guess Drew's probably getting top of the market regardless. I was gonna say that's like, a bad. That's yeah. a bad example. But, I like Drew's getting paid. It doesn't matter. It's just I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> that's all. I, I, it get, just bothers me a little bit that they that they wait because I, I guess I don't like the the whole. Is this guy gonna be here? Is he not gonna be here? I don't know. Going into the season, I just wanted to be done with. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, I think everyone does, right? I think that the players do, the coaches do, yeah. the staff does. They want to know who they have, what they have. Um, yeah, if everybody's all in, that's always a big Marcus thing. Williams. Yeah. I don't think there was a question of whether he should have been paid. Yeah. I mean, maybe they made it up in their mind that they weren't paying him that, and that that's that. But in my head, he, you just pay him and let's move on. Why? Because he deserved it. He was good enough. Yeah, I mean, he did deserve it, and he got it. He just got it somewhere else. Yeah, I guess. I guess it was just one of the situations where they set the number, and it's, it's he got he got better than that. Yeah, it's it's one of those things. It's it's it's. This is a, I hate the phrase. It's the business. This right? is a like, fan perspective. Is what I'm. Is I guess is all it is. I understand the business part of it, because it is always guys where you're like. All right, maybe you deserve. Maybe somebody will give you top of the line or top of the market, but we're not going to. Yeah. So if you can go out and get it, then good for you. Yeah. But I let's, don't know. It let's, just um, me. let's move on. I was going to say I have I have some I have a question I wanted to ask, um, and I know we're going to do an article about this, but I want to have a fun question here to get away from local stuff for a second. Your surprise team this year, and so your surprise team, and then also your disappointing team. Let's do that NFL. I don't have one yet. I literally just asked this question. I'm going to come up with it. You said don't do local. Can the Saints be a surprise No, they can. Yeah, it can still be the Saints, but like. Because, I I mean, I don't think people are. All right, here's what I'm going to do. Let's pull up the the odds. Okay. Yeah, that's that's fair. That's a good way to do it. Yeah, you're a betting man. Let's do this. I am a betting man. Okay. I could have just did this on my phone. I want to show off that I have a branded glass this time. Hey. I had a message last time that I needed a brain glass. All right, so the <laughs> Bills are the, are the favorite. I could, all right, so disappointment. The Bills are the favorite? The Bills are the favorite. Wow, okay. Tampa as the second favorite is a little bit, I don't know. One, two, a lot of injuries. The Packers is the fourth. I could see that being a disappointment. The 49ers, oh, my God. Uh, anyway, I could see the Packers being a disappointment. Yeah. Who are they throwing the ball to? Uh, there's a guy that's st- standing out in camp right now. I can't remember who it was. I remember reading something the other One day. One of the rookies? Yeah, hold on. Let's look it up. Also, it's the Packers. At some point, they they just collapse. I don't know. I don't know who it is. Either way, there's a guy that's doing well. Is it Romeo Dubes or whatever his name is? Surprise team, the Colts. Do you think so? How like how are they a surprise? What surprises you about them? Well, I'm, all right, so I'm going off of this. They're middle of the pack. Okay. Favorites, I guess. Uh, I that defense is very good. Yeah. The Colts defense is very good. I think their skill position play. Michael Pittman is one is my breakout player in my article for the Colts. Yeah. They have possibly the best running running back in the league. Yeah. Their issue has been quarterback. That's fair. And now they have Matt Ryan. Unless Matt, I mean, he's getting older, so he could just fall off. But as far, at least for the AFC, I think the Colts could be a surprise team. I, th- I think because my the only issue with them has been quarterback. And I think, I, be, I mean, I've always been not a fan of Matt Ryan, but I can admit that he's a good quarterback. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean, I'm, you'll get, you know, you get Saints fans that'll say he's not good, which is a lie. He, I mean, but. No, he's a good quarterback. They have a good team. One of the best off- – they're good at all the important positions. One of the best offensive lines. Mm-hmm. Their defensive line is good. The defense I – mean, like I said, the defense is very good. They're a little weak at receiver depth-wise, but Michael Pittman's very good. I just – I think they're good where you need to be good at. Yeah. And, I mean, like I said, this is a surprise team. So, are they better than the Bills? 
Probably not. But can they upset the Bills in the playoffs? Defense defense wins games. Yeah, no, I agree. Defense definitely wins games. Um, which is funny because I'm saying that and then I'm thinking about my disappointment. Um, my surprise team, let's start with this. These are both going to be hot takes, by the way. So let's have fun with this, y'all. You may say one and I think I may end up agreeing. Feel free to destroy me in the in the mentions if you hear this or just tweet me or, you know, text me if you know me. Yeah, put in the comments your surprise team and your yeah, disappointments. That'd be awesome. Uh, my surprise team is the Carolina Panthers. And, I, and I, when I pick these, I go off gut, right? I don't – like, yes, there are some things that I like about the Panthers. Their defense is solid. Um, I think that Baker is an interesting addition. Um, I think that if they're healthy, that's the big thing, right? I think if they're healthy, I think they give some some troubles to some folks. Now, they still have to face, you know, the NFC South. They still have to go through the Saints. They still have to go through the Bucks. That was um, And that was going to be my, my – where I disagreed was – their path to getting yeah. there I'm, is, and I'm fine is that. very is gonna be tough. Yeah, my disappointing team, and this is they're not necessarily ranked high on on like your right. your betting odds here, but the uh, the Dolphins, the Miami Dolphins, and I say that because they brought in a lot of talent. Yeah, and people are very high on them, and I I, I they could be really good. I'm be honest. I feel like I'm gonna. <laughs> already put my foot in my mouth here because I believe in what they did. Um, you put speed everywhere, like you have a good chance. But well, I've I've to somewhat agree with you. I've said from day one that Tyreek Hill is good, but they don't have the quarterback. They at, don't at least well. So the thing with the Dolphins is their offensive line was terrible. Yeah. So you can't really it's give still terrible, you can't give a way. fair evaluation of Tua that maybe they're not running. And they also had a defensive head coach or de- and a defensive-minded team. Maybe they maybe they just weren't built for him to throw the ball down the field. Because, I mean, at Alabama, he did it. He was decent at it. Yeah, he was okay. It wasn't, something, it wasn't his best part of his game. He's more of a Drew Brees type where he's sh- mm-hmm. intermediate passes, short passes. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I think, as far as the Dolphins go, I don't think there's an in-between with them. I think they're going to be either very yeah. good or it's just not going to work. Yeah. I, I, th- I think that that's my feeling too. Yeah. And that's kind of why I'm saying that, right? Like they're either going to no, really also, just be like, holy crap, they're good. Or it's just going to be like, wow, you guys. Really they're kind of in a boat the with the with the Saints on like the D de- or with the Colts on the defense where their defense is so good mm-hmm. that I think it gets them X amount of wins no matter what, which is how they won last year. Yeah. And. I mean, I do believe in um, Mike McDaniel's system a little bit. If it's if it's similar to Shanahan, where he came from, I think that that system just makes mm-hmm. a lot of play. And you can kind of, if you take the 49ers and kind of look at the Dolphins roster and build, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. If you compare no, it, for sure. you can see Waddle be in the Debo role. You can see Chase Edmonds having a solid year like Elijah Mitchell. Mm-hmm. You can, you know, Gasecki is Kittle. You see where, and then they have Garoppolo, who is not much better than <laughs> Tua. That's fair. So, yeah, I could see it working. And you but I think, it. but I think that's their ceiling is what the 49ers were last year. Well, it's also interesting to me because you have Edmonds as as your breakout player for the Dolphins, right? I love Chase Edmonds. Okay, I love Chase Edmonds. Tell me more. I so when he was in Arizona and they had Kenyon Drake still, mm-hmm. I constantly said they. I mean Kenyon Drake was their their lead back, and I constantly said Chase Edmonds is the best back on this team, and I don't know why he was doing the the Kamara thing when it was Kamara in his rookie year, yeah, where he wasn't getting a lot of touches, but when he did, he was efficient with them and he would produce with them, and I, you just see it, and yeah. it's, it's how I feel about Tony Pollard in Dallas, where. Zeke is was the better back, but Zeke's starting to fall off. So now I think I think Cowboys fans would agree with that, though. I, to an extent, my cousin in law is a Cowboys fan, and he he tends to agree. I would think, uh, just from conversations we've had, it's just it's now it's the efficiency is part of it. So maybe once he gets all the touches, it it doesn't work out. Mm-hmm. Maybe he's just a guy that can't do it full time like that. But I think. Th- those the Shanahan system, whoever the back is, succeeds. It doesn't matter. 
Yeah. No, I, yeah. You're, I mean, you're so, not and I, and I just, and I'm, I'm imagining that that system that McDaniel runs is the same as Shanahan because that's where he comes from. And I just think it. So my, and my um, rebuttal to that, I don't think you're wrong. My rebuttal to that, it actually goes in line with what you said about the Shanahan style offense. My first question before I even took into account the Shanahan style offense is Miami has, I'm going to like super over, you know, estimate here but 50 amazing running backs on the roster or what you would think of as amazing running backs. Chase Edmonds, Sony Michelle, Raheem Mostert, Miles Gaskin. Right. So my, I guess my rebuttal to your rebuttal <laughs> is. <laughs> Let me rebuttal your reboot. Raheem Mostert hasn't played a full season ever. I also like Raheem Mostert. Somehow he always ends up on my fantasy team. Well, Don't know how that happens. Because he always puts up fantasy numbers he's, when he plays. They say he's the fastest person on that team in camp. Okay. And that's a team with Tyreek Hill and. Jalen Waddle. So now, so my thing with so here's my thing with Chase Evans. I think he's the best back on the team. Whether his numbers are good or not, I don't know. Because like you're saying, there's four guys there. I don't think they keep all four. Like like, like we keep saying, right? And I say Sony Michelle. I could see Miles Gaskin being the guy that gets because he wasn't anybody last year. He was just by default, yeah, the lead guy. So, but he was looked at as as a, a good guy, you know, yeah, from the outside looking in. But I, but I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing for the Dolphins that they have. It's not. Four guys. What, I, what I was getting at, sorry, what I was getting at is the Chase Edmonds thing, like him being, a, I was going into the breakout player okay. thing. Yeah. And like, if there's four guys there that are good and they run the type of offense, this is the second part that I didn't say, but they run the type of offense where they do spread the ball to all these different running backs. How does he get, how does he get those stats? That is, how does he get the... That is, I mean, it is something that I thought about. It's just... So I looked at it as, in my opinion, he should be. So I've 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 believed that when Shanahan found his guy, he stuck with that guy. Yeah. So Elijah Mitchell last year was undrafted. Trey Sermon was a second round pick. Mm -hmm. Elijah Mitchell outplayed him. They rolled with him the whole year, except for when he was hurt. I I just I'm imagining that's how I'm kind of looking at it as McDaniel as. Shanahan, he could be completely different, but we've never seen be. it. Yeah. That's just how I'm going off of it right now. And I think I think Chase Edmonds is the best guy they have. And I okay. just imagine he shows himself. And I think of the running backs, he gets the touches. But Tyreek could get plays out of the backfield. Waddle could get plays out of the backfield. I and think it's going to limit thing. him. Yeah. Yeah. But, I, I mean, I, could, I don't think a 1,000-yard season is out of the question. It's better than what he's ever had. Yeah. And actually, that's how I've kind of viewed breakout. His he has his year that puts him on, makes him a national name. I yeah. guess is is how I kind of looked at breakout, is, as a to define it. I guess that's fair. So the Dolphins are your disappointment. Um, yeah. Do so you, I want to go hot take you with my disappointment? Give me a hot take. Yeah. The Chiefs. Oh. I don't like. Okay, yes. Um, it just it's hot takey, but I think I get so, it. So I can see it going two ways. I, I don't know. I don't really remember any of the games that they didn't have Tyreek about what you know whether they were still good or not. It's just I feel like he's Mahomes is built. Or that offense was always built off of him making those game breaking plays. Yeah. No, I totally agree here. And I just they replaced him with. Marquette, um, Dalda Scanling, mm -hmm. who was my breakout player for the Chiefs, just because I think he, I mean, he's going to fill in that role. You're hedging your bets. Well, when, when I say breakout player, it's it's the best year of his career mm -hmm. is what's going to happen, is kind of is another thing I looked at. And it's, I just wonder if, so I could see it going where they lost their best weapon, and it, and I guess you could say their best weapon. They still have Kelsey. But yeah, Kelsey's he's yeah, their best I for mean, sure. Hill was their best weapon. He did so much. It's I could see him losing him and it just falling apart. Yeah. But I could also see it you know, they add MVS, they get Juju. I could see it being like, all right, well now he's got three guys to worry about. And it makes the offense better. So I can see it them not falling off at all and being good. But it's I just, that's a important player to lose. Yeah, I think that it's without it's, replacing him with. So it's not like say say we traded Michael Thomas, mm -hmm. and we replace him with Olave and Landry. You're replacing him with a, a top tier rookie, 
and a proven veteran that can play. They're replacing one of the best receivers in the league and the most important receiver with a role player from Green Bay who is a deep threat. He really is just a deep threat. And then Juju, who had a couple good years in Pittsburgh, but when he had to be the guy, couldn't do it. Now, yeah. maybe he doesn't have to be the guy because you got Kelsey. I guess he can still be the guy and maybe him. I don't know. But no, I, th- I still think losing a guy like Tyreek hurts. I know that it hurts. And I, I mean, I'm sure Chiefs fans are looking at it like I'm saying, where, okay, well, we added these two. They can yeah. replace it. I, I think that for me, so I, and this is nothing, not even close, but playing quarterback in a flag football league for eight years. Um, just like when I would build my offenses, I would always look at it like I wanted that speed threat. Like I needed somebody who had that deep threat ability to let everybody else work underneath. And yes, like Valdez Scantling has that ability. But it's not Tyreek. But it's ability. not Tyreek, yeah. No. Like it's not even close. And then Tyreek was also the type of guy where if he wasn't running deep, you could throw a, a, a three three and in and he would make people miss and take it the distance. That is such a quarterback friendly weapon to have. Um that you didn't replace. Yeah. Yeah. I, and they're – so because we've kind of looked at this list, they're the third highest favorite for the Super Bowl. Yeah. And don't get me and wrong. And I get it because it's Mahomes. Yeah, I was going to say Mahomes is still, you know, magical, if you want to put it that way. Like, he's, he's good. <laughs> All right. I'm going to give you some teams. You tell me whether you take them over the Chiefs. Okay. The Bills. Yes. The Char- I mean, after last year, like, it's kind of – but yes. The Chargers. Oh, you know what? I almost picked the Chargers as my as my breakout. Oh, team. that makes sense. But I also have this thing that I said last week where I think the Chargers are going to be like nine and eight, and then Peyton coaches there next year. Um, yes, though. Yes, Bengals. I, I can see the Bengals no. taking a step back. No, yeah, I, I think the they overachieved. They're last good. Year. They are good, but I do think they overachieved last year, and I think that. I mean, I don't want to bet against Burrow because like Burrow's just Mister Magic. Like I just called, you know. Just called Mahomes the magic man, but two more. Ravens. No. I agree. Broncos. No. No? No. You don't think Russ can do it? No. No, I like Russ too, but I just I don't I don't think so. I think that I think they're gonna be very competitive with each other. I think the Broncos can win that division. They could. I'm not gonna say they can't, but like I if I had to pick, I'm gonna say no. I guess it's tough to say that because I think they can win the division, but if they play in the playoffs, it just takes one game. Yeah. I just – so I Denver's defense is better than Kansas City's. Oh, for sure. Those two running backs they have in Denver are unbelievable. Oh, I love Javante. Breakout player for the – I love Javante, yeah. Breakout I, player I, for it's the It's funny because, like, I saw that you listed him that as was a breakout one of the, player. That was one of the easiest choices. In the back of my head, I was like, is he a breakout player? He's it's, already here. He already tough. arrived. But he did. I guess technically that was did. one. So, so something that happened in that article, and it was – I think I told you about this. One of the things was it's all guys that were very good last year. Yeah. That I just think they get more yeah. touches this year. And I, I'm hoping that's what they do. I mean, Melvin, in, Melvin Ingram, Melvin Gordon is is good. So maybe they they don't give him. I mean, they were almost a perfect split, fifty fifty split. They were, yeah, very split. I had. I'm not going to talk about fantasy right now, but yeah. yeah. So I, I just, I I think the Broncos. I take the. I agree with you on all of those except for the Broncos. I take the Broncos over the Chiefs. You, your argument is compelling, actually. Um, you may have swayed me, but I'm going to just leave it up in the air and see what happens. I, the Chargers, I could. Did you say yes to the I Chargers? I did say yes. Mm-hmm. I think I take the Chargers. So then we too. think the Chiefs third in the division? Like now that we're putting when you put all it this that in way. mind, like when you that's put really it that what way. we think? There's three playoff teams coming from that division. Are the Raiders bad? You can have four four teams from the playoffs. Or I mean, from the, or can you have four? You only have four teams in the division. What do you mean? You can have three for sure you from can, the no, division. You can have three. It's tough. You can. There's three wild card teams now. Oh yeah, you can have yeah. all. There's a, it, and actually you can because when they first changed it, I remember going through this scenario because the NFC South was very good at the time. Yeah, and I was like, there's a, a way you could, and the path to the Super Bowl would be through all of your division rivals. Good. Love the Raiders it. are good too. The Raiders. That's why I was. That's why I looked at you. I was like, wait a minute. Like every. Team I mean, they have division, to be. They have to be. The they have West? to be fourth in the division. 
the Raiders? I think so. I, I think so too. But they're also competing for the playoffs. Like you could, you can make an argument for any of those teams. Yeah, yeah. Some more than the others. I go, I go. Broncos, Chiefs. Hmm. Broncos, Chiefs, Chargers, Raiders. No, I think, <laughs> I think I go Broncos, Chargers, Chiefs, Raiders. That's uh, I go. Yeah, fuck. I don't know. I don't want to. I really order. think I do. If we we're gonna have an article about that actually coming out. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, where we pick. We're going to do every... I guess we can kind of start wrapping it up. We're at an hour. Yeah, let's yeah, let's get to the top five. Just uh, well, let's run to, try to... Also, in the future, I, I can't see the timer right now, but we're going to try and keep these... Oh, it's on there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We're going to try and keep these to, I think, I th- 45 minutes, an hour? 45 minutes. probably hour, best. Yeah. Hour and 15 was a little long last yeah. time, and well, this is going to go that same. Just to, just to wrap it up before we do top five, I mean, I kind of like to ask you if you got anything coming on the site, on the um, no, com. The no.com. Oh, um, oh, uh, yeah. Well, that's not actually on the shop. It's not. It's not on the shirt. This shop. isn't on the shop. If y'all um, like it, if you like it, put it in the comments, and we can have it put on the shop. Yeah, for sure. NWO style. This is a uh, not exactly what's on the shop because I made this myself. Mm-hmm. But the flock is hot. Um, in time for Pelican season, we have a regular tank top on the shop. Yeah, so, which I still need to get, but I will be getting that thing. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, so yeah, there's no doubt. Brandon Ingram with the yeah, it's nice. You got any uh, any articles coming? I, d- I don't like obviously we always have the Patty's players um, every Sunday that I'm going to drop, which is always it, it can be fun or it can be serious. Um, there's no rhyme or reason to it. But um, I don't know, like the way I write articles and I said this last time, it's just it's something that it has to be something passionate um, that just hits me, which is why like the other day I dropped the KD article because I just had thought I, I literally woke up at 730. Yeah. I saw a tweet about it and I was like, you know what? And I just wrote an article in 45 I've been, minutes. I've been in a little bit of a rut too. I worked on that. Well, I've been working on the breakout players one. So that's been most of my focus. It's just little quick articles. I haven't really, I don't know. I guess with football season coming, I'll have some more. But yeah, I'm kind of with you. I don't really have anything coming. Well, and I did AFC breakout players. So I'll have NFC breakout players right. coming soon. Hopefully next week, maybe. Uh, we'll have our joint article that me, you, and Ethan are doing. Mm-hmm. We're going to pick the division winners from mm-hmm. every division. Um, we're going to make – actually, we're going to put our seeds for the playoffs mm-hmm. from both conferences. We'll have our Super Bowl matchup and our winner. So we're basically predicting the whole season. And then we'll do um, our picks for you know, MVP, mm-hmm. comeback player of the year, uh, which was something ahead. We'll save that for – next week yeah we could do that our debate yeah we could definitely do that uh yeah so you want to get in our top five let's do it i am so i'm actually really excited about our top five this week i Um, I almost wanted to lead with i did too like honestly if this episode fell flat it's because all i was thinking about the entire time was no i think we i think we had some good some good talks um Um, so so for for future reference we're gonna run out of ideas on our own so if you have any top five ideas we'll run out but I like it. Throw throw them in the comments if you got some top five ideas. And anytime we do a top five, we want to see yours. Mm. So these will get posted on Twitter. Sure. Reply to it on Twitter with yours. Put them in the comments. Um, yeah. So this week or last week we did top five ice cream truck uh, treats. Yeah, like I guess. Treats, yeah. Whatever. This week we have top five sports entrances of all time mm-hmm. which can encompass anything. everything anything like this is the reason realistic we sports unrealistic yeah movies yeah uh i'm glad wrestling, you said movies because wrestling is a list. sport yeah. <laughs> all right well you go first uh, give me your, so give yeah me I'll, I'll, I'll lead in because i think we're, we're you, thinking the same you thing have your honorable mentions or you... I, that's what i was going to say so first of all as i was putting this list together there's so many honorable mentions, especially when I think I'm obviously wearing an NWO style shirt here, right? So like you go in the wrestling world, that's literally the entrance is every to me, I'm a music guy, the entrance, the spectacle, it's everything, right? Um, so I have a bunch of honorable mentions. I guess I could throw a couple out before I get to my list. Um, you know, obviously Stone Cold, Chris Jericho, um, all the wrestling ones are gonna be honorable mention. Um, maybe he, maybe they're in his actual <laughs> list, but, um, you know, uh, remember the Titans, the beginning of that honorable mention, I just thought of it. So that's why it's mm. not on my list. Literally as I'm talking right now. Um, I don't know. There's so many though, right? Like if I left it off my list, I either didn't think of it or I just was like, mm, yeah, it was tough like, good enough. But like, you know, yeah. actually I thought of a couple on my way over here Yeah, that I had to switch my list up. Um, so my honorable mentions are more like 
not all of them, but some of them were, as you, as you said before, I'm a Miami fan. So yeah. Miami coming through the smoke is something that's a big entrance to me, but I don't think would be, yeah, n- you know, a, a, a general top five. But they did create the whole through the smoke thing. And um, huge, huge. Uh, what was another one? Oh, Reggie Bush with the bat. Oh yeah, man. I didn't even think of that. Yeah, that's a big but that's one. not a that's not a national one. I don't think. But the whole thing I was don't, he don't didn't. Care. They didn't want him to come out with that. And he yeah, that made it, it better. Anyway. Yeah, Reggie Bush with the bat was one. Uh, Michael Jordan's Toon Squad entrance. Mm-hmm. I thought about that one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's really the ones I had. It was most most of the, oh, and the Field of Dreams. This because Field of Dreams is tonight. Oh, that yeah. Them coming out. I'm talking about the act, the game they're playing mm-hmm. in at the no, stadium they built about, yeah. where they came through the cornfield. It, that's awesome. That is awesome. That's awesome. And they I had uh, what's his name, Kevin Costner, come through and do the whole thing. I thought yeah. that was cool. They've been year. talking about that for years. I have a I have a couple friends that actually work out there yeah. in Iowa, um, and they were tweeting, sorry, not tweeting, um, putting stuff on Instagram and stuff. It was really cool to see the behind the scenes and like cornfields and all that. Yeah, super so. cool, nostalgic thing. If you're a baseball fan, you know whatever. Yeah. But. Anyway, so give me your number five. My number five. So, we so we're gonna up. we're gonna alternate this. <laughs> we're gonna make it fun. My number five top five sports interests interest is I'm starting with wrestling <clears throat> and I'm going with the brood because duh anybody if you don't do you know what I'm talking about when I say the brood nope so like back in the day edge recently brought this back if you're a wrestling oh, fan okay yeah um coming up through the fire the music just that that like bass full music um I did see I saw he brought it back yeah yeah love that thing that's cool so. yeah I have uh Charlie Sheen in major league coming out the wild thing okay Okay, I'm gonna get there. I have, I have. I can guarantee you, I have more baseball ones than you have. Yeah, you probably do. So I thought we're uh, we'll go side note here, and I, I'll explain when it when I'm, it's on. I'm not gonna say what it is, but the reason I thought of this list is on my list. So I'll explain yeah. When so I, get to I it. so I did. I know why you thought of this list. So I, I kind of know what you're gonna talk about. I won't ruin that thing because that was gonna be um, one of the ones that didn't make my list, but like definitely deserves to. My number four, um, Chicago Bulls, Eye in the Sky, like the '99. Or not ninety nine, but the nineties Michael Jordan era yeah. Bulls. Hard, like, hard to disagree with that. Yeah, I, I have uh, Ray Lewis. Yeah, that's a good one. I don't even have to describe it. Just Ray good. Lewis. You know what it is? Yeah, Ray Lewis. That day, I mean, he just does it everywhere he goes. That's a good if one. you saw Ray Lewis in the street, you'd probably say, "Hey, that's fair." Can you, you would do that me? random <laughs> slide? Yeah. And yeah. we all tried to do it at some point in our yeah. life. I have, yeah, definitely right. tried to do that. Number three for me, Apollo Creed in Rocky IV. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. That is a good one. I like that. He died, but you know. (laughs) Sorry, spoiler. Uh, So this this is the reason this list came up. My number three is the closer for the Mets, the current closer for the Mets, Mm -hmm. Edwin Diaz, coming out to the horns. And if I can find a way to put this into the video version of this afterwards, I'm going to do it. This is incredible what he's what he does and what makes it so well they're i I think i read 61 and O after they lead in the in the eighth inning that is pretty phenomenal with him coming out he comes out so he's obviously hispanic he's got this hispanic trumpet song that it's phenomenal oh my goodness i I was watching earlier i got pretty jacked and they had a live game or national game the other night so they had like a dedicated cameraman that followed him from the bullpen all the way to the mound with this horn song playing, and if you don't know, just look it up, because it's in, and I almost put it higher than three. But, oh, this is your three, okay? But it just happened this year. Say. It didn't. It doesn't have the longevity yet that other ones had. So it's at my number three. I, I don't but wanna... I think in a few years from now, if we redid this list, he could be my number one. Did you? Maybe this isn't on your list because I think that I think that that what you just have for your number three is better than this. But a lot of people on the internet were buzzing today over this. Um, Felix Batista from the I've Orioles. Seen, I've seen that one. Did you see it? Yeah, he's. It's a good one too. Okay. It's a. It's a good okay. one too, but it's not on my list. Okay. I'm just making sure. I didn't want to. I didn't want to ruin it if it was. He's um, a good one too. I saw it earlier and I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. I didn't put it on my list because, uh, full disclosure, I've never seen The Wire. I haven't so either. So it didn't connect. I, I haven't either. It. So I was like, I don't know why this is cool, but I was like, whatever. Like, well, I've heard, so I'm trying not to make this too long because we're at an hour and fifteen. But so part of what ties into this is apparently where the Mets play is in like a. A heavily Hispanic area in New mm-hmm. York, which if anybody's from New York, you can, you know, chime in on that. But that's just what I what I heard listening uh, to a couple things about it, and that's why the fan base that's there connects with it so much, is because he's a Hispanic player, and 
it's just like a Hispanic thing that happens. So it, the whole stadium gets into it. It's awesome. No, it looks and it, 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 it might be a little. I'm sure it is a little bit of prisoner of the moment. No, but I've it looks, seen a lot it of people really agree cool. that it's. It's incredible. It looked really cool. I yeah. No, I could go on for a long time. So you probably should just give me. Your, no, we'll go. Your we'll we'll move to I, my number two. You already said it, so uh, we can move through it. Wild thing, major league. Come on. Yeah, it's it's a good Come one. On. Um, my number two is Mariano Rivera coming out to enter Sandman. I'm glad you said that. That's it's, and like like I said, longevity. It's the only reason I didn't put. Edwin Diaz over it and I was I read a story god damn it I don't want to keep doing keep this going. but I read it great I did a little so I did a little bit of research just to see if I was missing anything and I had to make sure Enter Sandman was the song that I had it right oh yeah I read that he said he didn't choose it that he's like he, almost like he was saying he wasn't a fan of it really that if he had his choice it would have been like a Christian song okay like it, he was, he make, basically said that my only job was to go out there and win the game. That people relate the him to the song or something. The way he said it, it was just like he he didn't care. Yeah. That, that it wasn't part of his identity. But I think most people would say. Yeah. No. I. It is. So it's, it's like he didn't. He wasn't a fan of it. Is almost what is what he was saying. That's funny. It it kind of catches me off guard. But that's funny. And and the reason it's funny to me. Is because that was going to be on my list, mm-hmm. but my number one uses the same song, hmm. and I felt like I couldn't have two on my list that used Inner Sandman. If anyone is a wrestling fan and knows me, you know what I'm talking about here. Um, the Sandman from ECW, the number one sports entrance of all time. Um, pick any of them, but specifically the one I'm picking is 2005. Uh, fuck, what was the name? Uh, one Night Only. Um, it was when WWF or WWE had had purchased ECW. They had another show, like One Last Stand, or maybe it was called, I don't remember what the fuck the name of it was right now. I've had too much bourbon. But <laughs> he used the whole song, Look It Up, just his whole entrance, not even just this one time. Like, as a kid, looking back at this thing, I should not have been watching it. Like, on beat, ripping cigs and cracking beers and, like, pouring beer all over his face, pouring it on women in the crowd and just motorboat. It's just, like, the most disrespectful thing ever. Um, but, like, I just, man, like, I am such a wrestling nerd when it comes to that. Like, if, if you want to... We're going to have to get into wrestling a little more. Yeah, I grew like, up with it. I got some stories. We used to on. We used to go... And actually, I don't want to... I don't. Are you done? I don't want to cut you off. I'm done, yeah. Look it up if you haven't seen it. I saw it. This was this popped up the other day on. I don't know. These wrestling things keep getting shared on my Facebook, like mm-hmm. random wrestling events. It was WrestleMania seventeen. I want to say in Houston, The Rock and Stone Cold. They shared the promo for it, and mm-hmm. I was like, "This is incredible." My way, and I was yeah, and I was there. Yeah, I was at that WrestleMania. Oh, nice. That one, and there was one in Seattle. I was at. So we're gonna have to get into wrestling. Yeah, we can. I get went on that. a WWE cruise on the Disney cruise ship. It was a good time. I have to. Well, next time. I'll write it down. I'd love to know more about that. But I'm going to purposely not ask about that in our offline conversations, yeah. and it's going to happen here. Oh, it's a good time. So sticking with wrestling, my number one. Oh. You want to guess? Stone Cold. Yeah. Yeah, come on. I, the like, Glass Shatter. That's a great one, but yeah. The Glass Shatter, and yeah. Yeah, that's a great one. When you said it wasn't on the list, I, was, I thought for sure you being a wrestling person yeah. would say it. And another one that isn't on my list that I forgot to mention, as honorable mention, was Old School Taker. Oh, for sure. And that's one that like, it deserves to be on the list, right? For me, it's too slow. I don't get excited it, about it. It is slow, but it's like there's a there was a closer for oh, oh man oh, oh Brian was it Brian Wilson I don't know but he used to come out it's yeah. not Brian Wilson but whoever it was used to come out to the Taker theme yeah which was tight but yeah Stone which, Cold we, Glass Shatter iconic oh for sure for sure that um, Undertaker obviously is iconic too. Um, DX. You could get in the wrestling. You could. There's so many wrestling. Very Mysterio's. Like, yeah. Um, there's some good ones. There's a lot of them. Um, but no. But the one thing I want to say, and we can we can wrap it up. But yeah. um, to go back to the Undertaker Undertaker theme, um, I'm a big fan lately. Like UFC guys are using wrestling themes as their entrances. Oh, is Fuck, he? Fucking love. Is he doing the Undertaker? Yeah. Is he yeah. doing the Undertaker? Um, <laughs> Colby Covington, which you know, however you feel about him. With uh, with Kurt Angle, it just fits so well. Like, I love it. More guys need to do that. If it fits their character, just roll with it. Yeah, the Izzy one almost made my list. 
Yeah, it's but a good I one. but I decided it's to just one. put Taker. In, or I'd not put Taker, but mention Taker instead. Yeah. There's a few UFC ones that can make the list, but we we close it out. Um, let's let's finish this up. If you liked it, give a like, give a follow. Um, we are on every platform. I know you're probably watching us on either YouTube or whatever you're watching us on. Just check our link tree. Um, Twitter, who effin knows, K-N-E-A-U-X-S. Um, the No. Is it B in the No? What's the Twitter for the, the main? It's at B in the No. At B in the No. Um, the website, the No.com, K-N-E-A-U-X. I yeah. always trip over that. Um, yeah. Myself, uh, at V, Patty V. I just changed it. It's a fun one. I like it. And I am at Rainy with a three between the N and the Y underscore days. Um, I just want to say stick with us with this. We're testing different things out Mm -hmm. every week. Eventually we're going to get it down. Um, I have a feeling this week is going to be better video quality wise than last week. Yeah. But yeah, we appreciate anybody that takes the time to even listen to 10 minutes of it. Yeah. So just stick with us. It'll get better. And uh, Pat and I are just learning about each other. I think it actually benefits us that we don't know all that much because yeah. it'll lead to some good conversations. It. But uh, yeah, that's all I got. Like, follow, subscribe, all of that. Go that's read it. our stuff. Go buy some merch. Yeah, the merch is kind of fire. And we're going to come out with some more. There's some stuff I've yeah, been seeing. Yeah, I think Ethan said we're going to do another uh, Flock is Hot thing coming up. I'm working yeah. on a new Brandon Ingram. Yeah, thing if you guys can see the concepts that roll through yeah. in our channels, <laughs> like they're they're actually better than the stuff that's out so just just stay tuned so all right i'm good that's it until next time who knows